Hey everyone, if you have a Polygon Siskiyou T7 like the one I have back here, one of the first things you might want to consider doing is to upgrade your tires to tubeless. Now this will allow you to run lower tire pressures without the risk of pinch flatting. And as an added bonus, small punctures are actually going to be sealed up as you ride. In this video, I'll walk you through the conversion process step by step so you can get rolling as soon as possible. Now I'm going to demonstrate this process for the front wheel, but the process is exactly the same for the rear. First thing you want to do is to drop the front wheel off of the fork. The RockShox Recon is going to be a six millimeter for the through axle. Now the rims on the T7 come pre-taped and the stock Schwalbe Hans Dampf tires are tubeless ready. So really the only hardware you're going to need is actually just a pair of tubeless valves like these that I have here that I got off Amazon. They're 44 millimeters long. Now you also need some tubeless sealant and the brand that I generally use is Stans, no tubes. And you know, this is like a staple around most bike shops. Now of course, once you go to inflate the tires, you're going to need a way to get a lot of air into the tire all at once, which generally means using a compressor or in my case, using a booster pump like the one I have here. So with the wheel off, the first thing you want to do is to let out all the air to remove the valve cap. And then you have to unscrew the valve valve itself. Don't worry, it can't fall out, so just unscrew until it stops, and then just depress the button until all the air comes out. So once most of the air is out, the next thing you want to do is to actually break the bead. So here's how you do that. Start with two thumbs spaced a couple inches apart. You just want to push really hard. If you did it right, you should hear a little pop like that where the bead is actually popping off of the rim bed. And then you want to just go around the rest of the tire and keep pushing the bead off of that rim bed. At this point, you might also consider unscrewing the lock nut on the valve because we are going to be pulling the inner tube out in just a sec. So what you want to do next is take a tire lever and get the tire actually off of the rim. Try and make sure that that bead stays in the center channel. And when you have a little bit of slack, go ahead and get the hook of the lever under the tire and pull it over the rim. Now, if it feels really tight, try and resist the urge to use these little hooks, which are often included so you can do something like this and then get another lever and kind of work your way around. Generally, you don't have to do that with modern tires and rim combinations. Now, if you make sure that that bead is in that center channel all the way around, that should give you enough slack and you should just be able to pull that bead right over the rim wall. Okay, so we have one bead pulled off, so half of the tire is off the rim. Keep in mind that the other bead is still seated on the rim bed we kind of want to keep it that way because it's going to make setting these tires up a lot easier. So at this point, what you can do now is actually pull out the inner tube like so. Now at this point, you should verify whether or not your rims are actually taped from the factory. What we're looking for here is basically no spoke holes showing. So there's this black piece of tape that's covering all the spoke holes like here. And there's only one hole for where the valve stem would go through. So this rim is all taped up and ready to go. The next step is to install our tubeless valves. So here's a close up shot of the ones I pulled off Amazon. These are like $12 a pair. I'll put a link in the description. So what we're doing now is we're going to find that hole where the valve on the inner tube came out. And we're just going to replace that with our tubeless valve. So we're going to go from the inside out, push that in. And then the other side, we're going to replace the rubber O-ring as well as the lock nut. So that's what the tubeless valve should look like once it's installed. I want to make sure that the lock nut is tight enough so that you don't see any of this kind of motion. I generally do this as tight as I possibly can by hand. I'm just going to give this like maybe another turn with a pair of pliers. I'm trying to do my best not to scratch it. But I really want to make sure that the valve is nice and tight. Like so. The valve is installed. That's what it looks like on the inside when you're done. This is where we actually want to add our sealant. Now again, what I'm using here is stands. And if you ever get a puncture and air starts rushing out of that hole, the sealant is basically going to also rush to that hole and basically clog it up. The amount of sealant that you're going to put in your tire actually depends on the dimensions of your tire. I'll put a link down in the description to a chart, but for this 29 by 2.6 inch wheel, we're going to put in about five ounces of sealant per tire. Now, regardless of what brand sealant you use, you want to give it a good shake before you put it in your tire. Some people will eyeball this. I prefer to be a little bit more precise. I have a two ounce syringe here, so I'm going to use two and a half of these. Oh, it's about one ounce right there. I actually did a pretty good job of estimating. So there's our five ounces there. The next thing we need to do is to get this bead onto this rim without spilling all this sealant. What we do is push over part of the bead. So now all this bead is over the rim wall. What we do is sort of carefully rotate and all that sealant is now down here at the bottom, sort of safely in that tire. The rest of the job is to get the rest of this bead over the rim wall. And this part, some people have trouble with. Try and resist the urge to use a tire lever. And if you use a trick where you make sure you push the bead into that center channel, it's gonna give you plenty of slack to be able to push that 
last bit of the bead over the rim wall. Proper technique, in my opinion, is always a grip and roll. So you sort of grab a piece of the tire and then use your arm to roll. So it's going to roll and just pop right over the rim like that. The bead is over the rim wall, but it's not set on the rim bed just yet. This is where we need that high volume blast of air, which is either going to come from compressor or in our case, a booster pump. And when you fully pressurize this canister up to 160 PSI, then you can go ahead and release all that air into that tire at once just by rotating this knob. All right, so in about 35 pumps, I've got it pressurized to about 160 PSI. Now what we're gonna do is actually to remove the valve core. Now this is gonna allow a higher volume of air to get into that tire all at once. And so it's just a matter of putting the core remover on and unscrewing the valve. So the valve itself comes out, looks like that. And what you're left with is basically just a hollow tube that leads into the tire. Hook up the head of the pump, just like we normally would pump up a tire. Okay, so here we go, three, two, one, and let all that air in. Alright, what we're listening for is some pops to let us know that our bead is up on the rim bed. There's one. And sometimes it pops and sometimes it doesn't. The real check is to look all the way around and see if the bead actually set. First what we want to do is actually to put our valve core back in. Now we're just going to inspect the bead very quickly. On the tire, there's kind of a line sort of where the bead starts. And you want that line to be kind of the same distance from the rim all the way around. In other words, you don't want any kind of lumps or hops in the tire. Now looking at this, it does appear that the bead actually set properly. So we do have success. We have a properly set up bead here. Now we're almost done, but we do need to do the obligatory sealant dance, making sure you get that sealant evenly distributed around the tire. Everyone's got a different sealant dance. That's a personal expression. Oh, that was stupid. I don't know why I said that. Alright, so believe it or not, you're actually done. All that's left to do is to reinstall your valve cap and you're ready to go. I would maybe do this at least one day in advance. If in the morning you come out and your tire is still holding air, you're ready to go. All that's left to do is to put the wheel back in your fork. On this recon, we're aiming for anywhere between 9 and 13 newton meters. And that's it. That's tubeless setup on the Polygon Siskiyou T7. Highly recommend it. It's really going to improve the ride feel. It's going to eliminate pinch flats. It's going to seal up those small punctures as you ride. What's not to love? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like this format too. It's a little bit more informal, less scripted. Hopefully still got the same information across. And I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.